Hey, there you are. Old stud walker out in the shop here. Hey, I got a, a little bit of an update on uh, making these gearboxes. You know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> they always say when you make a mistake, it's an opportunity for learning. And and a couple days ago, I, I made a mistake and <laughs> I think I uh, figured out a better way to uh, make these gearboxes. Basically, uh, the method I came up with was you need to drill all your holes first, get everything all ready, put it together with the gears and, and fit it all together loosely without any adhesive or anything and, and get it the parts situated uh, where you want them so that everything is turning smoothly, it's in the exact position and then glue everything together. So it's a, a fundamental difference. That way you can get everything lined up exactly where you want it and uh, you don't have to worry about going through the other rigmar rigmarole of uh, elongating holes and gluing on more plexiglass. And I, you know, I, what happened was <clears throat> I was trying to make another gearbox and so I made two of these little boxes. One I super glued and one I used the uh, acrylic glue that I just purchased. And uh, so I drilled this one out and you know, I couldn't get any, I thought I was being accurate, but I couldn't get things to line up very well. And uh, so I gave up on this one and the one I, that I glued with the acrylic glue, it had probably been sitting for two or three hours, which I think you're supposed to let it sit at least 24 hours or so. Uh, but I was too impatient, and so I started working on it, and I started drilling uh, one of the holes, and guess what? It started coming apart. And so I was like, oh, crap. But then I thought, oh, oh, that'll be good, because I then I can... Uh, making an adjustment before I glue it back together. So, I thought, oh yeah, that might work. And as I was <laughs> playing a little more with it, the rest of it came apart. And then it hit me, oh, you need to get everything ready to go and uh, fit it up dry so you get it exactly where you want it, then glue it up while it's still all together. And you could make your micro adjustments and, and get that thing. I, I did it. <clears throat> I did this one that way. And I tell you what, it, it came out perfect. The way that the gears fit together. Uh, the other one I did before, it fit pretty good. But it, it wasn't quite perfect. But when I, I did it, fitted it up loosely and then glued everything, it worked perfect. The, everything lined up perfectly. So I think that's fundamentally a, a better way of doing it. <laughs> so anyway, I think I, I'm going to delete that old video. So I'll show you real quick how, to, how I did all this. I got uh, two pieces of plastic here. Uh, my dimensions are inch and five eighths by almost inch and three quarters so the shorter part uh, goes vertical anyway the longer part is going this way inch and three quarters okay so I'm just gonna look at that and try to I don't know guesstimate where the middle is and then just come down just a little bit and I'll make a mark. I'll make a mark right about there. It's not too critical. It's, you want it about in the middle. And then we'll take it over to the drill press. Although I noticed that.
I got my holes drilled out here. I used a 31 64 inch drill and uh, then I had to ream it out a little bit. So let's see if I can. Oh, yeah, that one started already. <clears throat> That's a good fit. I'll try this one. Alright, I just tried the other side, it worked out better. Alright, so we got these in there. So what you do, take yourself a short piece of 3 16 inch rod, put it in there like that, put your gear in there like that, put this like that. Okay, not too bad. Then you can put these in here like this. Oops, I think it goes this way. Okay, so you got your your box loosely put together here. Okay, approximately where you want everything. Kind of squeeze it together. Take your gear, wherever I put it. Probably dropped it on the ground. I sure did. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to want to you're going to want to lay that gear on top of there. Like so. And then hold it up to the light. Make sure you got it centered. It's not tilted one way or another. And look through the plexiglass and look to see where the hole is. And make your make yourself a mark. I made a mark right about there. It doesn't have to be this method. It doesn't have to be too accurate. We just need to get somewhere in the ballpark. So we'll take these two pieces and. Clamp them together and drill them out. All right. Now install a couple bearings. Just a little bit of super glue. When you get ready to finalize your bearings or whatever, make sure you super glue all of them, even the tight fitting ones. I don't want you to think I'm just press fitting them. That might be okay, but anyway, that one's a little bit loose. I think the top one tends to get a little bit loose.
Okay. So you got these pieces. You can put the gear on there. Like that. And set it in there. Then you can test it out and see if it works. Just a bit. I guess we better tighten things up a little bit. Okay, as you can see it, I'm just going to let that naturally rest on top, let the gear naturally rest on top of the, the other gear, and then pick everything up and just kind of squeeze it together and see if it works. I got this gear where I want it. Kind of a tight fit, so I got it resting on there just naturally. I think that's looking pretty good. I'll turn it upside down like so. I'll just take this off, maybe, maybe not. Take our super glue. Get a toothpick here. If you use the regular acrylic glue, you got more time to make adjustments before it sets up. This uh, super glue sets up pretty quickly, so it's a little tricky. Okay. Get everything about where you want it. Turn it over. And super glue this side. Okay, it can get a bit messy right here. But try to get everything lined up. You can still move stuff around at this point, but you've got to move fairly quickly. So now, take this like so. Make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Like so. I set it back on the flat surface. Made sure it's turning properly. I think that 
looks pretty good to me. Take a little baking soda. <clears throat> Pour it down the corners. And we'll wipe off the excess. On the outside. I'll tell you what, that is a lot better fit than I was getting the other method. This feels really nice. Really nice. So that's what you end up with. And it's all put together so you know it's going to work. So once I get here, I'm going to take it all apart. and put a nice clamp on it. Like so. These pieces here I got a little bit long, but uh, that's okay. I did, did it semi-purposely. That's easy to sand off on the sander, so I, I would suggest maybe making these a bit long, so you make sure you get that hole in the exact spot you want it. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. We'll let that set up. Here's what it looks like after 600. You can see it's getting darker. It looks darker and a bit shinier. So now we'll go on to 1,000. All right, that's after 2,000. I'm ready for the buffing wheel. That's not perfect, but what I have to do. All right, I, <laughs> I use the buffing wheel. It's always a bit disappointing. Because once you get it shiny, then you can see all the scratches. So, that's not, doesn't look too bad, but if you look at it close. Anyway. Well, I guess that's about it for this uh, episode. Uh, <clears throat> Next episode, I'll show you how to make these uh, oars. And I hope this uh, video has been some use to you, and I'll see you down the trail.